Well, a titanic UEFA Champions League semi-final clash was decided inside the last hour. Manchester City hosting Real Madrid at the Etihad with a tie locked at one all from last week's first leg in Spain. Let's now look at the best action from another riveting duel between the two. Akanji and now Grealish. Grealish looking for Haaland. Oh, cleared off the line. Brilliant little flighted delivery look. And Haaland's just in behind David Alaba. Oh, he's got a score. You know, that is an app for him of all people. That's an absolute sitter. He should be nodding that one in the other corner. That's got to go in. Being watched by Kroos. De Bruyne trying to catch Courtois out. Reportedly instructed his players that they will have to suffer. Especially in the opening 30 minutes. There's De Bruyne. And it's not back in for Haaland. Oh, what and a save. Courtois. What a save. What a save this is. Is this time Erling Haaland leaps above Kamavinga. He is finding the corner. Rotary. The one was drifting over to the left hand side. Bernardo Silva waiting on the right. Stones. Walker. De Bruyne through to Bernardo Silva. Get him! Courtois not keeping that one out. Left foot makes no mistake. At the moment, Real Madrid are just getting caught between players. Nobody is attached to anyone. Such is the fluid, versatile way that City are operating. There's a corner in their penalty area, which Eddie Militao got up for. <laughs> Vinicius Jr. finds Benzema. Kroos. Kroos is shot. Oh, what a cracker. That's an absolute ripper from Tony Kroos. <laughs> Grealish. Carvajal's allowing him the chance to run into the box and find Gundogan and now it's Bernardo Silva Manchester City now have breathing space as you say that run from Gundogan is perfect and it's brilliantly dispatched coolly and calmly dispatched by Bernardo Silva who does everything right Rodri they all want him De Bruyne Courtois didn't get all of it Haaland wasn't teed up properly. Akanji with the shot. One brings two, and sometimes very quickly. Alaba's going to have a go here, and it needed to be tipped over by Edison. That was dipping in. Haaland into the feet of Gundogan. Back with Haaland now. Oh, another remarkable save. Courtois will not let him through tonight. Three. <laughs> in from De Bruyne. It's in for three! Unfortunately for Thibaut Courtois, who's been in unbelievable form tonight. That is Inter, having seen off their great rivals over two legs this past fortnight. They'll relish the challenge. Now Rodrigo. Might be a glimmer here with Benzema. And Edison's in his way. Now it's Lucas Vasquez. And Edison's in the way again. Benzema. The party starting. There might be another one on this ground on Sunday if they can clinch the Premier League title. But this is huge for them tonight. And here's Alvarez! First touch. Just perfect, that. Too many can't get there. And that's a brilliant finish. Poem. You get good players doing that, and it's hard to stop. Pep Guardiola beats Carlo Ancelotti. Manchester City don't just beat Real Madrid. They've hammered them out of the competition. A competition that has practically belonged to them over the years. But it'll be Manchester City or Inter of Italy. Yeah, so Manchester City with a big 4-0 win on the night. 5-1 on aggregate. They will play Inter Milan in the final at the Olympic Stadium in Istanbul, Turkey on the 10th of June. Our football analyst Brent Sancho was following the action and he joins us now. Brent, let me start here. How impressive were Man City today? 
Wow, 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 wow. I mean, words can't express, of course, Lance, what we've witnessed today in terms of the performance by Manchester City. Uh, it's probably one of the most lopsided football games I've seen with Real Madrid involved in it. Uh, but give credit and all credit to Manchester City. Uh, they were fluid, uh, they were effective, uh, they were energy levels on both sides of the football. Uh, and more importantly, they were clinical uh, and they were a team that looked like they are on a mission. Uh, and I think no matter how, and even if we saw the best Real Madrid uh, as well today, Lance, I still didn't think they would have been able to beat Manchester City. It was just one of the performances of the season. Uh, by a team that's very much in form. Yeah, Brent, forget the offensive brilliance of Manchester City today. We had discussed previously Pep refuting talk about Haaland being the difference and the, the impact on the Man City team that would make the difference to them winning the Champions League for the first time because he had suggested that what they needed to do was to be more solid in defence, which is part of the reason why they hadn't won the Champions League before. Real Madrid only scored one goal in these two legs. Defensively, Man City never allowed them much. Yeah, I think we spoke about it in our build-up here at Sports Max so about, of course, this fixture. Uh, we did mention that statistically, this has been Manchester City's best year. Uh, and they're doing it, Lance, with John Stones basically playing a makeshift, makeshift number six, uh, Akanji and sometimes Ake playing at left back, and of course the two solid centre half. So they've done it unconventionally. I remember when, of course, uh, Joe Gonzalo went to, to Bayern Munich. There was all rules and modes in the Manchester City corner. But how wrong were those fans to make those suggestions? Because what we've seen is an extremely solid Manchester City that's given them the platform to be very good offensively. It is and has been arguably the most balanced performance or the balanced, most balanced season we've seen from a Manchester City under Pep Guardiola. Right, and you know, despite the Manchester City's dominant performance today, credit has to go to Thibaut Courtois. And I say that because he had to perform some sort of heroics, of course, in order to, you know, keep Erling Haaland out of the score sheet. And he did so because there, Haaland had two headers that uh, Courtois, you know, kept out of the net. Yeah, two headers in the two critical junctures. If you remember, Mariah, afterwards, of course, uh, Real Madrid marched up the field and Tony Cross hit the crossbar. Uh, so it was a it was a good save. He was good in both legs. You have to give Quartar credit. He was a good, very good in both legs. He's certainly one of those that could walk off the pitch at the ATA tonight with his head held high, very high for that matter. But the players in front of him let him down immensely, despite his heroic performance here today. And as I'm singling out players, I have to single out one of my Manchester City players and substitute Julian Alvarez coming in, you know, at, in the nick of time and getting that goal for Manchester City. I think he's underrated and, you know, he needs to get some love. <laughs> I, I think for sure he's been getting the, the type of love, certainly from a, a pundit's perspective. Uh, a lot have been met, has been talked about his relationship with Erling Haaland, the kind of advancement uh, he is being Alvarez, of course, being asked to play as a little deep, deep line striker uh, and how well he's taken to that task. He's certainly been, for me, the find of the season for Manchester City thus far. He's one of those that now complements everything that they're trying to do, gives Pep Guardiola, Brian, more importantly, a different dimension as a the way they want to play, uh, because he's almost playing in a similar position as to where Kevin De Bruyne plays, but he brings a different skill set to the table. And yes, you have to give him credit because he was outstanding today. Brent, and in your footballing terms, because you've played the game, you know, you love the game so much and you've been on the field for Trinidad and Tobago, of course, representing our country. Talk to me about how a team like Real Madrid, who everybody says, you know, they own the Champions League, this is their trophy. How did a team like that look several classes below what we expect from them? I even joked today and said, you know, they look like they were playing La Liga because we know they didn't have a good La Liga season. But where the Champions League was concerned, you know, it's a different type of beast. How, like in footballing terms, and you can break it down to us, how was Manchester City able to come out there today and dominate like that against this team? It's very simple, Brian. This was always coming. You know, you do hear a lot of people talk about this is Real Madrid's competition and fair point to that because they've found ways. That's the key point. They've found ways to win this championship. Whether it's the brilliance of Cristiano Ronaldo, the brilliance of Karim Benzema, or of course the in-form of Vinny Jr. and now Rodrigo. 
But in all the circumstances, they have played, there have been games where, Man where Real Madrid have been very poor. And they've found that individual brilliance to win a football game. It, today, it did not happen simply because they met a team that was in unbelievable form and it was not allowed to happen. Yes, Real Madrid has been good in this competition, but the collective Real Madrid have not been great. We've had moments where they were outplayed in this very set competition and they were very lucky to survive. Uh, today, that wasn't the day for them. And the law of averages in football would suggest these sorts of things happen when you play poorly year after year. Yeah, and just looking at some numbers, Brent, that illustrates what you're talking about. Rodri had 124 touches of the football for Manchester City, which was uh, more than Karim Benzema, Rodrigo and Vinicius Jr. put together, um, which I think tells uh, quite a story. But I quickly want to zone in on Erling Haaland here because Lance made the point about Pep Guardiola hinting that maybe it's not Haaland who has been the difference for Manchester this season, but it's been their defensive stability and I remember us having um, a heated discussion following their semi-final loss last season as to whether they needed uh, a, a world-class striker or they needed to, to fortify that back line and we're seeing that play out this season but I've noticed though that Erling Haaland in recent matches has been missing a number of opportunities that earlier in the season he would not be missing and yes Courtois was brilliant today, but if you look at recent games, both in the Champions League and in the English Premier League, I don't know that if Ireland has been as clinical as he was at the beginning of the season. What say you? Yeah, maybe he's not scoring the chances that we have saw from the beginning of the season, but, but Ricardo, we have to talk about the body of work. Mm. And the body of work is why Manchester City is here. Without Erling Haaland, and the defensive solidity, they would not be here. That's a fact. Erling Haaland is a major reason why Manchester City is in the form that they are, because what he brings is balance. What he brings is a focal point. What he brings is, a, is an out and out, arguably one of the, the, the biggest threats, striking threats in world football. And if you are a defender, if you are holding midfielder, you're always wary as to where Erling Haaland is. There was not for the, the two horrific, uh, uh, heroic saves, like Courtois, he would have scored. And that is the point. The point is, yes, he's not scoring goals as he was in the beginning of the season, but he is still an integral, a very integral part of why Manchester City has been so good. Okay, Brent, we're going to leave it there. Of course, we'll have a lot of time to talk about the June 10 final when they take on Inter Milan. Um, at the moment, uh, Man City, obvious big favourites to win that. But uh, Brent, thanks for talking to us and, and we'll be in touch. All right, guys, have a good one. Yeah, Ricardo and, and Mariah, I, I just want our, our producers to give us a play in the first 30 minutes, just after the 30 minute. And to me, it exemplified what we saw from Man City today. We know that in Europe now, teams play out from the back and they don't like to just kick the ball out. But in the 31st minute, I saw a move when they played out from the back that illustrated composure confidence disdain even well we just we just saw it but i just wanted a, a little bit more of that for, for when it started the, the the sort of confidence that they played the ball out from the back when the real madrid forwards were pressing this just looked yeah, well, thank God it's not Harry Maguire and their back line. That would have ended quite differently. But you, you are right, Lance. They were absolutely brilliant today. Yeah. Um, and Pep Guardiola now becomes, has won the most Champions League matches as a manager against yes. Real Madrid. So um, another <laughs> um, outstanding achievement to his tally. And by the way, today was his 100th Champions League win, yeah. Pep Guardiola. And what a time to get his 100th Champions League win, definitely one of the most important because personally, while we all agree that his legacy yeah. for the most part has been cemented as a, a world-class coach, a top quality coach, I think there was mounting pressure, still is, 
on him to get the Champions League title for Manchester City mm -hmm. and now he has an outstanding opportunity, no better opportunity yeah. as Brent pointed out yesterday and based on today's performance he yeah. looks like an absolute genius. Mm -hmm. Manchester City are better this season yeah. than they have ever been yeah. and now they need to finish it off by winning the Champions League. Yeah, well, the best I can say for Inter Milan is that um, at the moment they, they have nothing to lose. No one expects them to win so they can relax and play a free um, open game against Man City well, in the final. They did say they wanted to avoid Real Madrid, so mm. game on. Break time, back with more on the zone after this.